What is up, guys? Dashing here in live. We are, yes, indeed, for the brand new season. Oh, it feels good. It feels real good, baby. A few long, long weeks, but we are back in the saddle. And yes, sir, the brand new season begins. And we jump straight in the action as always. You know we don't play around here. As we have got what could potentially be, man, our very first match of this brand new season. DRH, CMB veteran. The man who competed in the very first ever matchup here in CMB over nine years ago. And getting set is he to take on Troy Colt. How's everybody doing? Look at this. First stream of the new season. We've already had a hype train. It's going crazy. Thank you to everyone for the subs. Bless, bless, bless. And yes, guys, also, this season of premiere edition of Shockwave is sponsored by Factor. Get yourself some delicious grub support. CMB, use my specialized link to get yourself 50% off your first order and two free wellness shots by the way and that's for life with every new order and here comes Troy Call, who is a very trying to think of the right word energized I feel like doesn't do it justice I mean we heard from Troy Call last week and, and passionate maybe more passionate than we've seen from Troy Colt in a long time saying that this is gonna be the season he finally makes it back to the top. He will finally be world champion. Once again, he called out everybody called out Xander Slate. He called out Styles B. Godley, called out pretty much everyone on the Shockwave roster saying nobody is gonna stand between himself and the undisputed world heavyweight championship. Well, in that ring here tonight. He's got to deal with DRH, a former Zero-G champion. And like I said, this could be a humdinger straight out the gate. So here we go. DRH, Troy Colt, one on one. The very first matchup of the new season. The referee gonna ring that bell and here we go. Troy Cole comes out ready to go in. I told you he wasn't playing around. Rolling neck snap. After taking DRH off his feet straight to the top rope. What are we, uh, 30 seconds in the matchup here? Colt making good on his word. He spent these last two weeks this past month in the CME Performance Center every single day busting his ass. He said, hey, last season wasn't so great for me, man. I got my ass beat pretty much for a year straight. Whether it was by George K, whether it was by... Is DRH bleeding already, by the way? He is. DRH has been busted open by this opening onslaught by Troy Cole. Things not looking good for the CFB veteran. My God. And Troy Cole said, hey, whether it was George King, Bloody Justice, or Jay Young, man, pretty much spent a year... Get my ass handed and he called said no more, baby. To the top again. Waiting for DRH to get to his feet. Oh, a cannonball gonna lay him out. Has DRH even gotten a move in yet? Oh, there's a kick to the side of the head. If you can't discount DRH. There's a reason he's been around for nine plus years. A former Zero G champion. Could be looking to become Zero G champion again, guys. Yes, the Zero G championship is back. As announced by the higher authority, a new champion will be crowned on the very first episode of the Underground. Classic, a 10-man gauntlet. To walk into the Underground with some momentum on his side, he's finally mounting a bit of a cut. Big elbow to the back of the head, Troy Colt. Not gonna let DRH get very far. Hook to the jaw, spins around. Thought he might already be looking for the uh, 330 slam. There's a gorgeous German with the bridge, but not even a one count. And now he's going to the outside, kick to the midsection. 
Colt though wants to get him right back into the ring. DRH instead with some elbows to the midsection, guys. And what a show we have in store. How about our main event? The Women's World Championship is going to be on the line as Amber Reed finally, after two years plus, gets her one on one shot against Riley Van Wilson. A whole lot of history between those two. And another chapter going to be written in our main event. Gorgeous springboard clothesline by DRH right there. Like I said, don't count out DRH. Super kick attempted. Nice block though by Troy Colt. And there's the vintage Colt super kick right into the pin. One, two. And that's not going to be enough. And this matchup really sets the standard for this season. Everybody in the back is watching. The CM Universe watching. Who's going to get the first win of the brand new season? Throwing out some soup bones is DRH. We'll also here this evening on Shockwave episode 73, our season premiere, guys. We've got some interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4 way qualifiers. That's right. Anthony Martin, unfortunately, is not going to be able to join us here at the start of the new season. But the higher authority choosing not to strip him of the championship, but instead, for the first time ever. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, spikes Troy Cole. DRH. My God. One, two, oh, but a kick out. The higher authority instead for the, the first time ever, deciding to introduce an interim championship. Three, 30 slam, and that's gotta do it right there. One, two, oh, a kick out. Anthony Barn hopefully will be joining us within a few weeks. Hopefully no longer than a month, but until then, interim Intercontinental Champion will be crowned and qualifiers for that Fatal 4-Way that will take place at Climb to Fame, our first special event of the new season. They're going to start right here tonight. And how about this, guys? Don't forget about this matchup. The undisputable heavyweight champion, the new undisputable heavyweight champion, I should say, Styles B. Godley is here, and he goes one-on-one -on -one with John Lipnick. Payback on the mind of Styles B. Godley. Remember, Lipnick beat him at the end of last season. The only loss on the record of Styles B. Godley. But Godley says that's only because John Lipnick caught him off guard, jumped him from behind. Godley says that won't happen here tonight. He'll prove that it was nothing more than a fluke. Boy, call guys from the top. And remember here in CME, you have it to account of 20 to get back into the ring. The Colts a little bit impatient. Oh my God, he managed to shatter both of his kneecaps right there. Oh, that's 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 the very example of going high risk and it not paying off. Rest in peace, the knees of Troy Cole. Oh, into a, a cross face out. Not gonna do very much good for DRH. At ringside, this isn't false count anywhere. You gotta get it done in the ring. Colt gonna escape anyhow. Back into the ring, guys. Troy called from behind. Both these guys have hit each other with their patented finishing maneuvers. Colt now trying to mount a bit of a, a comeback. Nice counter by DRH. In the corner. Ooh, gets out of the way. Big kick to the side of the head. Off the ropes, what an even takes out the ref! Such force behind that springboard knee, it took out Murphy! Colt doesn't care though, to the top! Phoenix splash to the lower back! That's, you gotta imagine the match will be over with the ref's down! The ref can't make the count! Troy called stand focused, looking for another 330 slam right in the middle of the ring! But the ref is down! Murphy is completely out of it. Frog splash now. Troy Cole keeping the pressure on Murphy, meaning the stir. Murphy, come on, it's over. One, two, what? Oh, DRH just given too much time to recover. Well, Troy, it's your own fault. It's your own fault. Gets out of the way of that knee, though. 
Blood trickling down his face, but DRH staying in the fight. To ringside, Troy Colt. Snake eyes on the apron, which of course we all know is the hardest part of the ring. That's the last place you want to get dropped face first. <laughs> Troy Colt, man. Holding nothing back because he knows that he, he can't afford to here. You know, he can't talk that big game like he did last week and then come out here and lose the very first match of the season. But hey, DRH ain't looking to be a pushover. Maybe nine plus years here in CMB. Former Zero G champion. Couple of elbows to the midsection. Troy Cole gonna get back into the ring. He's done playing around here. DRH back in the ring, Cole from behind. Can't afford to give him that clean ring entry. Where's he trying to take him for a walk? DRH able to escape with some elbows to the midsection. Spins him around. Gonna look to nail him again. Oh, drops him. Right on his face. One, two. What a kick out. A kick out from Troy Colt. Both men desperately throwing out some big maneuvers there, neither connecting Hudakan Arana from DRH. Irish whip off the ropes he goes. Takes him off his feet, stiff kick across the chest, man. Lighting up that chest like a Christmas tree, one might say. DRH, if he hits this a third time, middle of the ring, into the pin. One, two. Oh, huh? what did I say? What did I say? Very first match of the season, and we might have ourselves a certified humdinger and a half. Troy Colt will not die. Oh, drops him on the top rope. Colt did not come to play around this season. This is a man refocused. A man on a mission. DRH be damned. Targeting that arm now. You can see DRH wearing that tape. Has a history of issues with that right shoulder of his. And obviously Colt is, is honing in on it. Now where is he going now? DRH going to drop to the outside. Troy Colt staying on him. Like peanut butter on jelly, if you will. Another great combination. Takes him down to one knee. DRH gonna fight back. A few punches to the midsection. Gonna suck the air right up out of Troy Colt. Throws him into the steel steps. Nice, Hurricane Arana. These fans in the front row getting quite a treat here. Backstabber! Referee. Wait, wait a minute. Oh my God, a stop. At ringside, Colt just had his, his skull crushed beneath the boot of DRH. Guys, this, this might be over. I don't know if Troy Colt's gonna be able to get back up from that. We might have a, a count out win for DRH here. How is Troy Colt moving? How is he back to his feet? Look at DRH saying, come on then. Oh, Troy Colt with a little bit of a cheap shot. Again, both men so desperate. What a match this has been. DRH, what the hell was that? I don't even know. But it was able to take Troy Colt off his feet. And now, DRH snaps him. Oh, but he's exhausted. He's got nothing left. Can he crawl into the pin? One, two. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. Oh my God, was it those precious couple of seconds that DRH was too tired to immediately go for the pin? What is driving Troy Colt? This man ain't human. Now from Brett Rope. 
Best moonsault ever. As now he looks to target the knee of DRH. Ground the high flyer. Northern Light Suplex. How does he have enough left in the tank? Rolling through into a Brave Buster. And now the Colt stalking DRH as he picks himself up in the corner, but gets out of the way. Lured him in. Another handspring back elbow. What is it gonna take, man? Imagine being. Oh! <laughs> well, it looks like lucky for DRH. That wasn't too bad of a landing. Troy Colt now to the oh my god, he clips him! He certainly didn't get all of it. Clipped him though. That's enough. Back to work on that left knee. Troy Cole almost impaled himself on the freaking ring post there. Oh, God, speaking of the ring post, DRH. Greeting it head first. Look at him, he's trying to, trying to get feeling back into that left knee as DRH. His whole body is hurting right now. Man, I was gonna say, what does DRH do here, guys? <laughs> Imagine being DRH right now. What are you thinking? You have hit this man with absolutely everything. And he keeps getting back up. Look at DRH. He said, I can go, I can go all night long, baby. Come on then. Troy Cole said I can do the same. Now the man back it down. Oh, but Colt took his eyes off the prize and paid for it. Suicide dive to the back of the head. And DRH has had enough. Slamming him face first off the apron. Revolution knee. Trying to shatter the jaw of Troy Colt. Not again. Not again. What? Troy Colt. He saw it coming this time. He said, I don't think so, Bubba. Popped him up into the air. Caught him on the way down. Goodness gracious, bro. Troy Cole is on something tonight. He's on one. As the kids today might say. And does he finally have what it takes to put the RH down for the count? Phoenix Splash! Oh no! The RH gets out of the way! Kick to the top of the head though. Troy Cole. Now gonna drag him into the corner. Knife edge chop, and again. What the hell is he doing here? Oh, double knees to the midsection. That could be it right there, guys. Wait, Colt, Colt is hooking the rope. Hey, ref, ref, try Colt's hooking the rope on DRH. Able to kick out nonetheless, guys. Troy Colt. Acted a little bit fucky in this matchup. Couple of times now. He's been playing dirty with DRH. Oh, what a drop kick. Troy Colt's gotta be thinking the same thing right about now, man. What the hell do I have to hit this guy with to keep him down for the three count? I mean, my goodness. Going to the top. Could he be looking for the Phoenix Splash? No, the frog splash, though, hits perfectly. One, two. Dude. <laughs> this is insanity. Our first matchup of the new season. Kicks the top of the head. DRH, nice takedown there with the head scissors. Refusing to allow Troy Colt to get back to his feet. Oh no, the stomp, this time in the ring. And Troy Colt bloodied up as well. Surely, surely this match is a... Brother? What's in that boon juice? What's in that boon juice? A fifth! Fifth time throws his arm over Troy's chest. One, two, three. God damn. 
him. Guys, we might have to call it right there. I don't know if I, I have anything left. I don't know if I can call the rest of the show. But DRH can't even stand, man. What a match. Brother. Well, if that's an indication of what we've got coming our way this season, buckle up, lads. A long, long history indeed between Tail Colt Val and Jason Spade. And one would have to imagine Tail Colt Val is watching very closely what's been going on the past couple of months between Xander Slate and Jason Spade. And I'm sure that she has got her eyes, just like everyone else in the CM Universe, fixed on Climb to Fame, where we will see for the very first time ever here in CMB. A buried alive match. Xander Slate, Jason Spade, somebody is going six feet under. 
But up next, man, hey, I don't envy any man that has to follow up that opener we just saw between DRH and Troy Cole. But Justice Stone certainly going to do his best. And this is our first of three interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way qualifiers this evening. Justice Stone with his opportunity to advance to climb to fame, be a part of that Fatal 4-Way and earn his very first taste of championship gold here in CMD. But he is going to be taking on the returning former NGW champion, former NGW tag team champion, the one and only Tenra returns to CMV after a couple of years competing overseas in Japan. He has found his way back to CMV and is wasting no time trying to reestablish himself amongst that locker room in the back. You know, I bet Tenra uses Factor. Look at that physique. You could too. Use my personalized code. Get yourself 50% off your first order plus two free wellness shots. Tenra definitely a proud supporter of Factor. You want to be cool like Tenra, don't you? I definitely saw him down a couple of wellness shots before coming out here. <clears throat> so here we go. Justice Stone, Tenra for a spot in the fatal four-way at Climb to Fame to crown an interim Intercontinental Championship. Snap vertical suplex, Tenra certainly coming out, ready to get it on Justice Stone. Gonna put a quick stop to that. Big old Uranagi. And Tenra fires back at him with a punch in the midsection, now an Irish whip into the corner. As the night goes on, we will also see David Pope and J.B. Hayes competing for a spot in the Fatal 4-Way. And a matchup I'm very much looking forward to, Rafael Hernandez of the Higher Authority going to take on Peligro. Coming up next after this, though, guys, it is Styles B. Godley, the undisputed World Heavyweight Champion. One-on-one -on -one with John Litnick. Do not go anywhere. Big kick to the back of the head. And it's not as though Tenra has been, you know, sitting at home these last couple years on the on the couch eating potato chips. You know, he's been in Japan competing weekly. I'm sure he's picked up a thing or two. He's looking to show to Justice Stone here tonight. Oh, being a, being a little bit cheeky right there. Oh, and Justice Stone not going to have that. And coming into this brand new season, I actually had a talk with Justice Stone earlier this week, guys, and he told me that told Stone's crew is no more. He and Aaron Stone still good friends, but they have decided to amicably. Is that, is that the right word? Is that how you're supposed to say it? I don't know. I'm, look, I'm not a, I'm not an English teacher over here. I'm not an English major. But they have decided to part ways, and instead become singles competitors. Justice Stone here on Shockwave. Aaron Stone, a part of the Octane roster. They will remain friends, but they've decided to go their separate ways. And I'm honestly very excited to see what Justice Stone could potentially accomplish on his own here in the brand new season. And this would be a hell of a way to get things started. To earn a spot in that interim Intercontinental Championship match at Climb to Fame. It has to get through. Tenra kicks the midsection there. Off the ropes he goes, drop down. Leapfrog, making him run the ropes. Oh, and pays for it with a big old nasty clothesline. Big boot to the jaw now, gonna drop. The ice cream man as he desperately picks himself up. Tenra keep it on him. 
beautiful disaster kick. A man who knows his way to my very heart. Could that do it right there? No, Justice Stone still with us. Able to kick out at the count of one. And there's that vintage Tedra Pele kick. You know, typically he used to come out of the corner with it. He ain't stopping. Tedra. Could it be the Playbuster down onto the knee? Vintage. One, two. Oh, I thought that was it. Talk about a close call, 2.999, baby. These fans here in attendance obviously enjoying the show so far. How could you not after that opener between DRH and Troy Cole? I'm sure both of them are in the back right now with a couple of ice packs. Getting checked on by the uh, medical crew. Elbow to the midsection by Tenra. Again, this man, a former NGW champion, a former NGW tag team champion. Oh God, we might, we might be in for a bloody, bloody night, man, because now Justice has been busted open. I believe it's Piper, if I remember correctly. Well, look at this. Justice Stone perhaps trying to bloody Tenra as well. Oh, man. Hard in the corner. Woo. Down to the lower back, double boot stop. Vintage Morton combo, yes! And again? Oh, the biggest Morton fan. Tenra says, get me the hell out of here. Look at Justice Stone, pleased with his handiwork. He's liking the way this match is going right now. Drop kick to the middle of the back. And Justice Stone perhaps doesn't know who, who he's playing with, but Tenra may have, uh, you know, turned his life around while over in Japan the last couple of years. But this is a man who's done some pretty heinous things during his time here in CMV. Oh, God. He follows up that back suplex on the apron with a shot to the jaw. Not one, but two, and Tenra is busted open. No vintage Wharton combo this time, though. Tenra, I'm sure he's used to the hard hitting offense being in Japan these last couple of years what a clothesline that was from Justice Stone by the way oh god and now making him kiss the floor cracking the skull of Ted right there but Justice Stone is out of it as well can he get Tenra into the ring? Try and pin him. He can have this matchup won. No, Tenra back to life. Oh, and gut first. Goes Justice Stone into the steel steps. Look at Tenra saying, come on then, boy. I hope that ain't all you brought. Back in the ring, cheeky jab by Tenra, forearm smash, and again, beautiful leg lariat. Right into the pin, thinks he might have it done right there. One, two, oh, no more sense. Quite enough. Big old drop kick to the back of the head. Tenra has certainly focused his offense on the head and neck of Justice Stone for good reason. He's going to be looking to hit that brain buster down onto the knee once again. Joe! How's it going, my friend? Good to see you. Season premiere here. What a show it's been so far. We're only into our second matchup of the evening. Lovely Yurinagi. We still got a whole heck of a lot to look forward to. Uh oh. Justice Stone. Package pile driver. Yes, indeed. I think it might be over right there, my friends. One, two, three. Yes, Justice Stone advances to climb to fame. But look at Tenra. Tenra learned a lot about respect during his time in Japan these last couple of years. He's offering a handshake for a hard fought match. Oh, come on, Justice. The man just wanted a handshake. He was trying to show you respect. But Justice Stone says, get the hell out of here. He wants the ring to himself to celebrate this massive win. Yes, Justice Stone is heading to climb to fame.
previous match. John Lipnick, guys, making his way to the ring. A godly from behind just bashed John Lipnick in the head with the undisputable heavyweight championship, which apparently just dissolved into a <laughs> into another dimension there. But oh my God, godly! He's got a bone to pick with John Lipnick after what transpired at the end of last season, guys. Well, of course, John Lipnick returned, revealing himself as the, the mystery man who had been going around for weeks and weeks, taking out members of the Shockwave roster, caught Godly off guard and delivered Godly to date. His only loss in the ring, Udo Dos Trace pinned him. Well, Godly said that's only because, like a rat, John Lipnick attacked him from behind, but obviously Godly using Lipnick's own tactics against him here. And now the matchup, oh my God. Has the bell even, even run, guys? Oh, it has, I guess. Godly into the pin after hitting that mega F5. How does John Lipnick even have a chance here, man? The undisputable heavyweight champion mauling him. Looking to send a message on behalf of the higher authority. Knocked down to the outside. Oh my lord, double boot stop. Goes for the kick again. The vintage Morton combo caught though by John Lipnick and turned into a dragon screw. Look at Lipnick letting out a woo. And now taking in Godly staring him down. Look at these two, man. They want to rip each other apart. Remember, the reason Godly missed the uh, tug of war match back at validation was because John Lipnick laid him out in the parking lot along with Bobby Lee Stud. Oh, Lipnick busted open, drops right into the pit. All the damage done to the head. I mean, that just tells you the, the resolve of John Lipnick to even be able to, you know, put up any sort of offense after being bashed. With the undisputed world heavyweight championship right upside the head. Great counter by John Lipnick. He can't even get a handle on Styles B. Godly. And look, nobody besides John Lipnick has been able to defeat this man. And John Lipnick Look, I might have to agree with Styles B. Godley here. Lipnick may have only beat him because it caught him off guard. Attacked him from behind. That wasn't the case here tonight. And John Lipnick knows a thing or two about undefeated streaks. He, of course, has the longest undefeated streak in CMB history. Great clothesline. A former undisputed heavyweight champion in his own right has been very cryptic since his return, taking aim at who he sees as the villains here in CMB. Attacking pretty much anybody. Choking out Godly there. Able to avoid the big boot, may very well have taken his head clean off. Lipnick though, never won to back down from a fight. A lot of things you could say about this man. Godly says, get that shit out of here. God, now up on the shoulders, seven foot tall, 300 plus pounds. The undisputable heavyweight champion, Styles B. Godly, what a choke slam! It's over. He put him to the goddamn canvas right there, brother. <laughs> Look, most men would have been down and out after getting hit in the back of the head with the undisputable heavyweight championship. But Lipnick, whatever fight he's got left, he is giving it to Styles B. Godley here. Off the ropes, he sends him. Oh, sleeper slam. Hooked him by the head. Puts him down, 
for the three count. Styles B. Godley gets his revenge on John Lipnick. And Godley more than pleased with himself here. Look, when John Lipnick had to jump on Styles B. Godley, Lipnick was victorious. But when Godley got the jump on Lipnick here tonight, well, we can see the result. Who is gonna be able to stop Styles B. Godley? You told them you were a hero. Look where that lie has brought you. For weeks, I've tested a theory. My idea that if you were in danger, no one would save you. To my delight, each week it becomes clearer that no one will miss you either, for they all think you deserve this. You brought this on yourself the moment you told them you were a hero and dared to act on that deception at my expense. Look where your actions have brought you. On your knees, looking up at me stronger than I've ever been before. Your lies caught up with you. Indeed, your actions have consequences. And yet, you will fight back. I expect that. I welcome your insolence. Otherwise, it won't be satisfying when I strike you down from your high horse, stomp you out beneath my boot, then scatter your remains amongst the other self-anointed heroes who have come before. If you did have a modicum of dignity, if you were even a fraction of the man you told them you were, then you would have no expectation of having company in your grave. But you're no hero. Like most members of the CMB roster, as we just saw, Leon Gata not able to uh, relax during the offseason as he was hunted relentlessly everywhere he went by Subject Zero on behalf of Tailcoat Valid. We'll find out exactly what kind of condition Leon Gata is in this upcoming episode of The Underground. He's a part of that. Zero G Classic, the gauntlet match to crown a new Zero G champion. But it's very clear that the issues between the Arsenal, Tilco Val, and Leon Gata are not going to be left in last season. For one reason or another, Val has become fixated with the Golden Lion. But coming up next here on Shockwave episode 73, guys, a day beyond our hands as Danny Elliott going to be going one-on-one -on -one with the new, and dare I even say, improved Beatrice Lotus. Danny Elliott, one of the many new additions to the women's division here in CMB. And we actually saw a couple of weeks ago, she was uh, sort of picked on by Chloe Marks. Danny Elliott, a few of the other rookies training in the performance center. Chloe Mars came up to them. Sort of said they had no chance to survive here in CMB. Danny Elliott, quick to remind. Chloe Mars is getting some deer in the headlights. She's competed in Japan for many years. She's coming into CMB with a lot of hype behind her. A lot of people excited to see what Danny Elliott can accomplish here in CMB. Chloe Mars is certainly not one of them, though. Chloe telling you. Elliot to watch your back. But Elliot gonna have to watch your front go up against Beatrice Lotus here tonight. Lotus, who last we saw her at the end of last season, defeating Violet Evans in that incredible matchup. 
and has finally struck out on her own. Beatrice Lotus says no more. Otreto holding her down. And considering what she was able to accomplish as a part of Otranto these last couple of years, I'll be the first to say, whoa, what a counter there straight out the game, tell you what. I, for one, am definitely looking forward to what Beatrice Lotus can do all on her own this coming season. Danny Elliott obviously going to enjoy a little bit of a height advantage here against Lotus, but that's not stopping Lotus from taking early control. Barrel roll. Going to go after those knees, slamming them into the canvas. Lotus, no fool, knows that going up against a larger competitor, it's always a good idea to try to take out their base. Stomp to the arm. Now there's that newfound viciousness from Beatrice Lotus. Hoping that that might be enough to dispatch Daddy Elliot. No such luck though for the two-time women's tag team champion, former rising star champion. And well, speaking of the Rising Star Championship, guys, actually breaking news from earlier this week that I can share with you all now. The reigning, defending Rising Star Champion, Isabella Almas, guys, a couple weeks ago was found unconscious in the CME Performance Center locker room. And after you know, the last couple of weeks meeting with the doctors, unfortunately, Isabella Almas not gonna be joining us, it would appear anytime soon sustaining a couple of pretty severe injuries and well due to that Isabel almost has been stripped of the rising star championship you know they say what goes around comes around it wasn't all that long ago a couple months ago that Isabella almost took out Ruby Rattel cost her the women's world championship look I'm not pointing fingers I'm not one to gossip I'm not one to spread rumors did Ruby Rattel potentially get revenge on Isabella Almas? Who knows? Nothing is confirmed. All right, the investigation is still open, but one way or the other, Isabella Almas out of action, and so the Rising Star Championship has been vacated. And for someone like Beatrice Lopez, you've got to imagine, hearing that, she wants that championship back around her waist. Trying to impress the higher authority with a win here tonight over the debuting Danny Elliott. Oh, wait a second. Danny Elliott has caught Lotus with a LaBelle lock. And especially at the start of a brand new season like this, the new men and women, they wanna, they wanna make that great first impression. They wanna, they want to not only let the locker room know, not only let the higher authority, Pat LaFave know, let the CMU universe know what exactly they bring to the table, what exactly they're capable of, what they are looking to accomplish here in the new season. Lotus throwing caution to the wind right there. And lucky for her, it pays off as now you we see some very suggestive headbutts. Look, do I think Beatrice Lotus has the potential to break out on her own to become Women's World Champion? You're damn right I do. I mean, if you were already behind Beatrice Lotus, that matchup she had with Violet Evans, that, that should have won you over. That should have let you know that she's not playing around. Elliot, knee right upside the head. Doesn't stop there, though. Slamming. Lotus face and chest first off the canvas from the fireman's carry position. Things are not looking good for Lotus right now, but just like that, able to send Elliott into the corner. Full steam ahead. Puts her up on the top. 
dangerous place to be for both women. Oh, Elliot's trying to fight back. Lotus, though, with some clobbering blows, follows it up with some wicked looking elbows to the back of the head. Lotus, oh my god, poison Frankensteiner from way up top. And immediately now, from the high red district, the hangover, which of course does not connect. That's about as vintage as it gets for Beatrice Lotus. But that's okay. Backstabber. Oh, come on now. Beatrice Lotus having some fun at the expense of Danny Elliott once more. Over the top and to the outside. Yeah, will we? Will we see Beatrice Lotus hit the hangover this season? That should be a poll. How many times will Beatrice Lotus successfully connect with the hangover this season? You know, my guess probably be, um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her twice. I think she's gonna hit it twice, all right? Right now, though, she's got to think about it. What the? Oh, oh, wait a minute, guys. Look who it is. Chloe Marks told Danny Elliott, you better watch your back. And Marks now in the middle of this awesome matchup coming down here. Distracting Danny Elliott. Lotus going to take advantage with a crucifix. One, two, three, and Lotus. Thanks to the distraction by Chloe Marks. Picking up a great win for herself. And Danny Elliott can't believe it. A hotly contested matchup between these two. But thanks to Chloe Marks, that bully. Beatrice Lotus escaping with the win here tonight. And as we get ready for our next matchup here on a Shockwave episode 73, guys, we want to send out a big thank you to Ted, a.k.a. Dulcify. I hope I'm saying that right. I believe I am. Once again, far from a uh, professional English speaker here, for the new tunes on the, uh, the loading screens we have here, the brand new loading screens. Bless. Big shout out. And again, guys, if you want to support CMV, you know, bless for the subs. That's a great way to do so. You can also check out Dubby, W.GG, promo code CMV23 to get 10% off your purchase. Or, as you can see right there on the screen, Factor we are sponsored by here for the season premiere. Use my specialized code, get 50% off your first order, plus two free wellness shots. I mean, come on now. And David Pope certainly coming out here looking like he's fresh off some wellness shots. My man is hyped. My man is ready to go. Interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way Qualifier here, my friends. We saw earlier tonight Justice Stone besting Tenra to earn the first spot. Who will join him as David Pope gets ready to take on J.B. Hayes? And later on tonight, it'll be Rafael Hernandez and Peligro vying for a spot. As 
Anthony Martin, unfortunately, unable to join us here at the start of the new season, but I would wager he's watching intently. And a great matchup. This could certainly be David Pope. J.B. Hayes, the former NGW champion. A man with a lot of potential, and I believe that he wasn't able to fully expand on that potential last season. You know, coming up through NGW, defended the NGW championship against Paul Devine at Ascendance 11. Has had some great matchups, some big wins, but was never really able to get going again after losing the NGW championship. Well, now it's a brand new season and a brand new opportunity has fallen into the lap of J.B. Hayes here. You know he's gonna make the most of it. An incredible athlete up and down. But the same thing said about David Pope, you know, last season, David Pope alongside Max Cutter, debuting as Hellfire. Didn't take them long to get into the Octane Tag Team Championship scene. And well, despite a couple opportunities, they weren't able to bring those titles home. So even though Max Cutter is, is not out here in the corner of David Pope, Surely supporting his tag team partner as Max Cutter is going to be a part of the other final interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way Qualifier. Next episode of Shockwave, we could potentially see Hellfire truly representing come climb to fame. That was for sure a, uh, a great start for Pope with that spear. How about J.B. Hayes with a butterfly backbreaker? Pope gonna set him to the outside and over the top. You know, David Pope, he's a big boy. Impressive athleticism on display. Oh, come on now, not the foot DDT. That's just despicable. Still to come here tonight on Shockwave, episode 73, guys, our season premiere. The undisputed elite. A new force we record with the women's division. We're going to be taking on the Amelia and Pratt attack. We also have a Rafael Hernandez Peligro one on one for a spot in the fatal four way at Climb to Fame to crown a new interim intercontinental champion. And our main event, the women's world championship. Amber Reed finally gets her one on one shot against RBW, baby. I cannot wait. Into the pin here, JB Hayes. Could be a very easy night for him, but no. And look at the physique of JB Hayes, man. Looks like he's been doing nothing but training during the offseason. Woo! The right off right there. Whoa! But David Pope with a quick escape to the outside. Too late for JB Hayes to, uh, Course correct. Now he gets caught on a sleeper. Able to do a ring two. No hope for a rope break, but able to escape on his own with that surprise jawbreaker. Walking him over to the corner. Gives it the old snake eyes. This would be a huge win for David Pope in more ways than one. Obviously, not only would it get him into that fatal four-way at climb to fame, but defeating someone the caliber of J.B. Hayes, the former NGW champion. David Pope could establish himself as a, a serious threat as a singles competitor. Prove that he can get it done on his own as well as in the tag team with Max Cutter. From the top. Oh, goes for what looked like a diving Forearm smash, but Pope able to get out of the way. Oh God. Now Pope just taking his time as he batters J.B. Hayes. Oh, talk about a kick. 
I think I just saw Jamie Hayes spit out some beef, but able to come back to life just in time. 2.999, oh no! The stomp! Introducing J.B. Hayes. Face first to the canvas and into an Anaconda Vice. Anaconda Vice is locked in here. Big, big trouble, J.B. Hayes with no choice but to tap out. And David Pope for help by a good advance to the fatal four-way at Climb to Fame. Will his tag team partner Max Cutter be joining him? We'll find out next episode of Shockwave, but man, what a definitive victory that was for David Pope. My bad, hit the wrong loading screen there. Show is not over. Apologies. Not yet. We still have some great action to look forward to. <laughs> they, they didn't go that far over. Did a DRH and Troy call that the rest of the show has to be scrapped. But here we go, my friends, the arrival of the undisputed elite here in CMV. Of course, you know, would it be a season premiere if I didn't botch at least a couple of times? Now we just gotta wait for my batteries to die and then, and then the ritual will be truly complete. But that right there on the right, Corey Doyle, that massive hulk of a woman. You see up on the second rope is Sue Plex. And then there in the middle is Ruby Rebel, the undisputed elite. Looking to make their mark in CMV. And this will be Ruby Rebel and Suplex in action as Tori Doyle in their corner. And the Amelia and Pratt attack. Bring their friendship into the brand new season. Of course, repping Amity overall. And they not only have their eyes set on becoming a women's tag team champions once again. But we actually saw a tweet earlier from Amelia Jones. I didn't read it in time. But hearing about the uh, Rising Star Championship being vacated, Amelia Jones throwing both her name and Precious Pratt's into the hat to be considered perhaps for a shot at the vacant Rising Star Championship. You know, as it pertains to the Amelia and Pratt attack guys, these last couple weeks we've sort of seen a well, a little bit of a, a little bit of a personality change for Amelia Pratt after she unfortunately read a certain book of Precious Pratt's, a book that she evidently should not have. I guess we'll see if that new personality comes out to play at all here in this tag team matchup. Suplex gonna get things started with Amelia Jones. 
Our tertiary main event here. Coming up next, our co-main event, Rafael Hernandez and Peligro for the third spot in the Interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way at Climb to Fame. We've already seen Justice Stone and David Pope qualify here tonight as Jones makes an early tag to Precious Pratt. The former women's tag team champions in the Undisputed League surely know that. They're gonna pick up a big win their first night here in CMB and Tori Doyle is not wasting any time getting involved from ringside. She has ripped off the top turnbuckle, exposing the steel that lies beneath her. Now she's digging under the ring. I guess she didn't find anything to her liking, though. And we can obviously see here that the Undisputed Elite is not going to be playing by the rules. Tagged to Amelia Jones, tagged to Ruby Rebel as well. Rocket didn't fully connect. Gonna allow Jones to toss Rebel into the corner, clothesline, back elbow. For effort, there was an attempt, oh, and again, well, Amelia Jones perhaps a little bit, a little bit too wired for the season premiere here. Maybe had a couple too many cups of boon juice, maybe a couple too many wellness shots. I'm not sure. She needs to calm down a little bit though, pace herself. Amelia Jones might not be out yeah, 100% after going through this change she's been experiencing the last couple of weeks. Now, what exactly was in that book? What exactly did she read that has caused her to uh, act out like this, to undergo this transformation? I don't want to know. Keep that book far away from me. But Precious Pratt doing her best to help her tag team partner and friend through this difficult time. That's not what matters right now, though in that ring. A million Pratt attack, not wanting to be a stepping stone for the undisputed elite. Ruby Rebel, cross-legged. Oh, laser, that was sort of a Samoan driver. She was even marked out to herself there. Hot tag to Precious Pratt. And it's right after Rebel. Damn. Quite an uh, aggressive streak Precious Pratt has. Referee trying to fix the, the top turnbuckle. Unless we have ourselves an accident. Which of course is what Tory Doyle, I believe, is hoping for. Jawbreaker. And Rebel now. Regal Cutter, maybe? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Tory Doyle. The ref just put the turnbuckle back on. Come on now. Gotta make the ref's job harder. Oh, Precious Pratt taking a chunk out of the forehead of Rebel. Oh, and a scratch down the back, too. Precious Pratt has got some long nails. <laughs> Tori telling the, the ref to fuck off. Stop fixing the top turnbuckle. Double tag, in comes Amelia Jones, in comes Suplex. Oh, look at the great cheese on the abs of this gal. My goodness, look at those thighs. Forget about a watermelon, you can squash the head of Amelia Jones here, potentially, oh, but wait a minute, crunchy. Doesn't matter how big you are, your neck can still snap, and Amelia Jones, grabbing out the arm, all oh, the plex with a big old forearm to keep her at bay. This referee is about to throw down a Corey Doyle, bro. <laughs> we gotta charge Tory for all these turnbuckles, man. They ain't cheap, you know. Suplex just gonna huck Amelia Jones into the corner like it ain't no thing. Goes for the pin, but only a two cap. Of course, currently in possession of the women's tag team titles. Tandem of Hakiko and Gianna. We seem to be having a bit of a uh, their alliance, if you will, on shaky ground coming into the new season. Hakiko 
doesn't seem to be too keen on keeping this partnership going much longer. She's spoken out about her dislike of Gianna. That could be an advantage for the rest of the tag teams in the women's division. Certainly these two teams here. The win will only get them closer to a shot at championship gold. Rapid kicks to the face by Precious Pratt. As once more, I hope our referee is getting paid enough, man. Suplex takes Amelia Jones down, hammer fists. Trying to bash her face in. Irish whip off the ropes, drop down. Leapfrog. And a belly to belly. The right home to mama about. It almost made Precious Pratt fall off the ape in such force. Tag to Ruby Rebel. And again, not able to look at Amelia Jones like, what the hell was that? Should maybe uh, ditch the drop kicks. They're not working out too well for her here. The Yo Barrow DDT nicely executed though. Right, we gotta get Tori Doyle out of here, man. Ref, just, just send her to the back at this point. Ruby Rebel. Watch out, Suplex. Shining wizard. Crack on the back of Amelia's skull. Uh, yeah. Not stopping. Butterfly backbreaker. Sting in the spine of the usually happy go lucky Amelia Jones. Uh oh. Oh, the exposed turnbuckle comes into play. Ref, come on. How do you not realize what's going on there? Amelia Jones now. What the hell is this? The undisputed elite. Oh my God, with a, with a sort of assisted flatliner. But not even a one count. Ref took a little bit too much time getting into position. Ruby Rebel gonna keep on Precious Pratt at ringside. And Suplex has no doubt about Amelia Jones in a bad way right now. Amelia very wisely did a roll to the outside. <laughs> Accidentally knocks over Tori Doyle. That's how big this gal is, man. You know they say how certain people don't know their own strength. I think that might be suplex. Oh my god! The Shelton down onto the floor. Amelia Jones concerned about her tag team partner, but knows that she can't hang around here at ringside for too long. Corey Doyle trying to put hands on Jones there. Doyle well, may have led to a disqualification. Drop down, leapfrog impressive that Jones has enough left to perform at such a high level. The Undisputed Elite have largely been in control here. Using their power and underhanded tactics. <laughs> Thanks to Tori Doyle's assistance at ringside. Tag made to Ruby Rebel. Precious Pratt charging after her. Bad idea. Elbow to the midsection. Oh, but a cheap shot from Suplex, but Precious Pratt able to maintain her control. The freeze and shatter, and the tag to Amelia Jones. Rebel waiting for her. Oh, couple boot stop right to the sternum, right to the chest. Oh, and a double knee face breaker follows it up. Things are not going well for Amelia Jones. Not the foot DDT. As if the brutality isn't enough already. The undisputed elite are looking to send a message to that women's division. That they are here, they have arrived, and this season will be theirs. Beautiful disaster kick for Amelia Jones. Not making it such an easy task for them. Caught by Rebel just as she was about to make a tag to Precious Pratt. Cheap shot for Pratt. Hey, fair game. The undisputed elite obviously not going to play by the rules. Not afraid to get their hands dirty. You can't be mad that the Amelia and Pratt attack. Trying to beat them at their own game. So 
some serious strength by Jones right there to get up suplex in the fireman's carry position. Discus Yabuncha and the tag to Pratt. Suplex back into the ring. Pratt on her. Ooh, nice elbow drop. Suplex helped up to her feet. <laughs> Precious Pratt with a choke bomb to the massive suplex. Very impressive, but only gets a two count. Ruby Rebel cut off. Oh, whoa, what a choke! Precious Pratt with an elevated two-handed choke to Ruby Rebel. Amelia Jones gonna get rid of Rebel, keep her busy at ringside. Uh-oh, Plex. Oh, no. A jackhammer. Flattening Precious Pratt. One, two. What a kick out. Resolve on display by Precious Pratt, but Plex. Plex ain't having it. Oh, no, not another one. If one ain't enough to get the job done, surely two will do it. Jack Hammer numero dos. One, two, three. And the undisputed elite arrive here in CME with an impressive victory over the Amelia and Pratt attack. Amelia Jones a little bit too busy. Stand on top of Ruby Rebel at ringside. Got back on the apron just in time to see the match come to an end. And the women's division has been put on notice, I do think. The undisputed elite has arrived. Let me make sure to hit the loading screen this time. Another interim Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way Qualifier. As we'll find out who's to join Justice Stone and David Pope, who have already qualified here tonight. That climb to fame. And there is the undisputed World Heavyweight Champion, the man who has already had a busy evening taking out John Lipnick earlier. But this, of course, is Rafael Hernandez set to take on Peligro for a spot in the fatal four way at Climb to Fame. You know, I'm glad you asked, Soul, because that is letting you know that the season premiere here of CMB brought to you by Factor. And you can get 50% off your first order plus two free wellness shots if you use my personalized code. You know, Styles B. Godley, he didn't get to be that big all on his own, all right? He certainly drinks his wellness shots daily, okay? A wellness shot when he arrives at the CMB Performance Center, a wellness shot when he leaves. Styles be godly leading Rafael Hernandez and of course the all powerful Pat Lafave to the ring. The 
Pat Lefebvre now in total control of both Shockwave and Octane promises the higher authority will usher in a new era this season. And again, we already saw what Godly was able to accomplish earlier tonight. Getting his payback against John Lipnick. One cannot help but to be in awe when in the presence of Styles B. Godley. You know, I passed this guy backstage earlier tonight. I was just trying to, you know, go fetch some hot water for my oatmeal. And God, I got like a chill down my spine when I walked past Styles B. Godley. He didn't even look at me. But I made sure to uh, get by him real quick. Made sure not to get in his way. Higher authority out in full force here tonight for the season premiere. This is club indeed. Brand new season kicked off here tonight. It's been an excellent show so far. Our tournament event now coming up next. And of course our main event still to come. Amber Reed, Riley Van Wilson for the Women's World Championship. Rafael Hernandez looking at making a clean sweep. For the higher authority here tonight on Shockwave. A task easier said than done though. And she is up against the fatal feline. Peligro ripping kill your heroes now exclusively on Shockwave. We saw them take over Octane last season. And Peligro, of course, well acquainted with the higher authorities. Doing everything in his power alongside Morgan and Chris Diamond, Blake Virtue, to stop Pat Lefebvre and the higher authorities total takeover of CMV. But well, as we saw back at validation in the tug of war match, Pat Lefebvre had the last laugh. And now CMB completely and totally under his thumb, but that doesn't mean Peligro is going to stop fighting. It'll give him much pleasure to topple Hernandez here tonight and cost the higher authority an opportunity at even more championship gold. And Josh Wolf there backing him up. A crowded ringside area for this one. Rafael Hernandez, Peligro for a spot in the fatal four-way at Climb to Fame. To crowd an interim intercontinental champion and what else but a super kick. That even makes Styles be godly cringe. Warm smash and off the ropes by Hernandez to respond. Hernandez sent into the corner, Peligro, knife edge chop. And with those kitty claws of his man, a simple chop like that could slice your chest to ribbons. And Pat Lefebvre isn't wasting any time going up the ring. He's pulled out a sledgehammer, but hey, we can't really see it. It's out of the camera's view, but I think Josh Wolf just unsheathed the top turnbuckle. I guess we'll see. Yeah, he did. 
So it looks like neither side. Now Pat LaFave is doing the same. Pat LaFave's like, all right then, you son of a bitch. Oh, this poor referee, man. She just had to go through this in the last match. Oh, Hernandez! A submission specialist. He's got Pelling apart. With that rear naked choke. The last thing you want to do is allow Rafael Hernandez to take you down like that. He's got that MMA background. Josh Wolf, once again, tearing off the top turnbuckle. Now, why does the referee only notice that that top turnbuckle has been unsheathed? Hmm, I wonder. Look, I'm not saying this referee was paid off by any means, okay? I wouldn't say something like that. I wouldn't accuse someone of something like that. Now, were it Murphy, I might have an easier time to leave so. Rafael Hernandez caught with a punch to the midsection. Oh, Irish whip the counters. Down to the outside. I thought he was going to go careening right into that exposed turnbuckle. Looks like Hernandez content to just wait for Peligo to get back into the ring. Again, this for a spot in the fatal four-way matchup at Climb to Fame. Our very first special event of the next season. Of the new season, I should say. Justice Stone and David Pope have already qualified here tonight. The final qualifier. And the next episode of Shockwave. From the top, a sort of super kick. Oh, this is that one, though. Leaves an opening for Hernandez. This referee, man, she's just going back and forth, back and forth. We have to get, uh... <laughs> what a DDT. We got to get perhaps some uh, harder to remove turnbuckles here. Rolls him up. Kick to the side of the head. Hernandez, understandably, as most do, went up against Felipe, having a hard time keeping up with his speed. Oh, Josh Wolf. Look at Pelly goes like, Wolf, get the fuck out of here, man. I don't need your help. Look, Wolf's just trying to, you know, lend his aid, trying to be a, a good pal. He's doing a bit more harm than good at the moment. Hernandez throws Peligro off to the side, running sent on, crushing the ribs of Peligro. Kill your heroes wanting to bring championship gold back into their ranks. Of course, Josh Wolf losing the Anarchy Championship to Knights at the end of last season. Almost feels weird to kill your heroes being without any championship gold. Uh oh, uh oh, Josh Wolf, there you go with a big assist now. Rafael Hernandez getting his head smacked off that exposed turnbuckle and a super kick, but the ref is busy fixing the other turnbuckle. Allows Hernandez the time to kick out. Turnbuckle mania here. We need to get two refs. Hernandez, Irish whip. And look at while the referee is fixing one turnbuckle, Pat LaFave unsheathes the other. Big time knee from Hernandez there. Might have been a three count, but uh, we will get some extra time to kick out. Elbows to the top of the head. Sharp man could very easily bust you open. And look at Hernandez now. This is a rookie mistake here. Going to chat some shit with Josh Wolf. Letting him know not to play with the higher authority. But Peligro capitalizing. Super kick into the pin. 2.999 bread. You legend. Blessed for the sub. Well, these fans are in attendance, don't seem to mind this matchup going on forever. A slew of stomps to the chest by Peligro. Hernandez gets right back into the ring, though. Just needed a quick breather. Good 
to the side of the head. There's only so many of those super kicks you can take from Peligo before your jaw is hanging on by a thread. Lucky if it hasn't been turned to a fine powder. Look at Hernandez now. The joint manipulation wearing down a Peligo. Agonizing pain. Josh Wolf creating distraction. Which once again Peligro takes advantage of. But we knew not neither side here was gonna exactly play fair. And using those kitty claws, but Rafael Hernandez with those press right hands. Rapid kick to the face of Peligro. Get cut open. It's almost like a rite of passage here in the season premiere to get bloody. And as proud of his handiwork as he watches Peligro crawl into the corner, hoping for just a moment of refuge. Peligro, though, a crafty one, crafty as they come. Not too sure what was attempted there by Rafael Hernandez. <laughs> At least you were just. Kind of going balls to the wall right now. And for good reason, only one of them can go to point to fame. Compete for the interim intercontinental championship. And it looks like it might be Rafael Hernandez punching his ticket. No. Hernandez going to follow Peligo to the outside, not allowing him to get very far. Territory to be in with both Pat LeFave and Styles be godly lurking. Peligo gonna send Rafa Hernandez down onto the floor, gets back into the ring, letting out a, a mighty roar like the great king of the jungle, the lion. Definitely saw some spit go flying up in the air there. Ooh, a nice little step up sent on across the lower back. Now off the ropes, a springboard super kick. Rafa Hernandez might be tricking all his meals through a uh, through a straw by the time this match comes to an end. Oh, we couldn't even watch Peligro. Not afraid to potentially murder this man live here on Shockwave episode 73. Oh, hang on now. The undisputable the heavyweight champion, Styles B. Godley. Offering up a distraction there. Get to the midsection though, Peligro. Another springboard super kick. Like I said before, we knew we weren't going to get a clean one-on-one -on -one matchup here between these two. With the higher authority and Josh Wolf at ringside. Wait a minute. Tooting up the fan. Super kick. One, two. A kick out from Hernandez Peligro. He doesn't know what to do. A moment of hesitation. From Brett's rope, a body splash. Tries again. Hernandez gets out of the way. Straight jacket. Neck breaker. Now the half Nelson. Hernandez able to take complete and total control. Right in front of Pat LaFave and Styles B. Godley. A pretty Lazy pit attempt there, not even bothering to hook the leg. Oh, Peligro, this is not a good idea. Oh, watch out, everybody! <laughs> Springboard four smash there by Hernandez. Lafave and Godley almost getting caught in the crossfire. Look at how Hernandez just targets every single part of Peligro's body, man, stomping on the bicep. Now try to go after the legs with Peligro. Not giving the opportunity to do so. Pat LaFave screaming in the face 
of Peligro. And that allows Hernandez to strike with the end of Heartache. The spine of Peligro could very well be in pieces right now. Hernandez tries to get it back in the ring. Peligro, though, still with life left in him yet. Springboard. <laughs> West Coast. Forcing Hernandez to kiss the canvas, bust him open. Uh oh, Peligro. Oh no, end of Harding. Out of nowhere, a second time, but Josh Wolf. Josh Wolf distracting the referee. Well over a three count here. Rafael Hernandez had the match won, but Josh Wolf. Great time there to help out his stablemate. And this matchup continues. Oh, this referee, look, I get it. She's in a bit of a, a tough spot. You don't want to get on the bad side of the higher authority. You don't want to potentially risk your career, but I mean, something's got to give. Everybody should be ejected from ringside at this point. Big old clothesline from Hernandez. Peligro. Rolling out, out of the apron, slowly picking himself up. Hernandez stalking him. Should have acted quicker, though. Tries to go to the ropes. Says Peligo stopped by Hernandez. Irish whip. Oh, chop block. Tearing the knee of Peligo to shreds. High kick. Man, what a left hook. And that's going to... Create a huge opening for Hernandez. The lowdown. A second time, and that's got to be it. One, two, three. Rafael Hernandez is going to climb to fame. Another huge win for the higher authority here tonight. A clean sweep, and Pat LaFave could not be more pleased. Riley Van Wilson, she's known 
to be an emotional competitor. We've seen it time and again throughout the years here in CMV. And after what Amberie did to Xiaorong at the end of last season, showing nothing but disrespect to the Crimson Empress after defeating her in Xiaorong's last match. RBW swore coming into this matchup that she would rip Amber Reed limb by limb to pieces. But perhaps going a little overboard, obviously attacking Amber Reed before the matchup could properly begin. And I stress, the referee called for the bell. He has ruled to throw this match out. We are not getting this matchup here tonight. This is not for the Women's World Championship. These two just continuing to fight. And I don't know of a single person who would dare to get between them. I'm certainly not getting in there. Amber Reed waited so long. Over two years to at last get this one-on-one -on -one shot at the Women's World Championship Championship that she never lost. And meanwhile, you got Riley Van Wilson, who busted her ass for over four years to finally become the Women's World Champion once again here in CMV. An epic clash this should have been, but Riley Van Wilson allowing her emotions to get the better of her. And even though this is not a proper matchup. We're not going anywhere until things get settled between these two here tonight. They are tearing into each other. A history that goes back years and years spans the globe. Oh, R.E.W. going after that arm. Perhaps looking to bring home a souvenir in the form of Amber Reed's arm. Put it in her trophy case. Got the lapel lock cinched in, but this is not an actual match. So even if Amber Reed were to tap out, it wouldn't matter. RBW, I don't think she had any intention of letting go there. Reed able to escape on her own. Now an Irish whip. Oh, there it is, the A trigger coming out of nowhere. And just like that, man, you can snap your fingers. Amber Reed with a triangle choke. Now she's looking to put RBW to sleep here, right in the middle of the ring. Nothing the ref can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. This is not a sanctioned match. This is not a match at all. The CM Universe robbed of what would have been an all-time classic. Oh, Ripcord Flatliner puts down RDW with authority. And Amber Reed left standing tall as the dust settles. Now, were this to be an actual matchup like it was supposed to be with the Women's World Championship on the line, would that have been the result? We don't know. Thanks to the emotions of RBW getting the better of her. The season premiere of CMV here on Shockwave was in 73 comes to an end with RBW lying unconscious in the middle of the ring. Amber Reed standing tall. But the fate of the Women's World Championship up in the air for now.